We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept and one we intend to win. As one small step for man, one you know, when JFK gave his speech in 1961, he said, we will land a man on the moon and bring him back safely by the end of the decade. He had no clue of how he could possibly do that. We rose to the occasion and we in fact did land a man on the moon and we did bring him back safely by 1969. So our moonshot is 100% renewable California in 10 years or less, no fossil fuels, no nuclear. The clean energy moonshot is 100% achievable. The reality is that we're not dealing with rocket science. This is far easier than putting a man on the moon. You're talking more about the cell phone revolution, right? In 1996, no one had a cell phone. By 2006, they had the iPhone. And the idea is as basic as changing out a 19th century technology. And what we're proposing is that that entire system of grid, as you know it, be replaced by microgrids. Global warming has to be our top priority. The science is undeniable. We're staring down the barrel of a gun, potentially looking at the end of human civilization. And it's not happening in the future, it's happening right now. The greatest damage humans do to the Earth is the way we do energy, and we've got to change it, and we've got to change it fast. Unless we address climate change, I think we are facing a near extinction. It is, at the moment, I think the most urgent issue of our time. Climate change is a worldwide challenge that we, as a collective civilization here on Spaceship Earth, have to face. In order to rise to this challenge, we have to set really big goals. The Clean Energy Moonshot is an all-out sprint to 100% renewable energy, which is humanity's best strategy for mitigating climate change. Creating local energy systems called community microgrids will be crucial in achieving these aggressive renewable energy goals. We can uh, uh, enable a higher percentage of renewables, like a, a microgrid, can eventually help to do 100% renewables. Community microgrids are the bridge between renewables and getting to very significant levels of renewable energy and the future of the energy system. When you start making these kinds of uh, technologies available, essentially what it means is that you're empowering the consumer, you're empowering the communities to be able to participate more actively. When you think about the electricity grid, you think about electricity generation first. And that's really going to come from solar, wind, geothermal, biomass. But those don't generate power exactly when consumers are using power. Hydrogen plays a beautiful role there. We're here at the Cal State LA station, which is the 10th station in the network to come online. We're making our hydrogen here from electrolysis. Basically, we're splitting water and we're using renewable energy. The most important aspect of a hydrogen fuel cell is the fact that we're using one of the purest uh, fuels that we have, which is hydrogen, and the only byproduct that we're getting out of it is just water. You can store it for an hour, a week, a month, a year, and it doesn't actually go bad. And then you can convert it back into electricity when you need it using fuel cells. We can start to develop hydrogen capability locally simply by having an electrolyzer facility combined with um, a large solar PV, combined with a fueling station for vehicles. We have 12 hydrogen buses that are part of our fleet and they're uh, fueled here on site with hydrogen that we actually produce from renewable energy sources. We can, in fact, collectively harness our creativity and our resources to heal the planet. We have the resources and all the technologies needed to move beyond the fossil fuel era 
to create a sustainable energy system. The World Business Academy recognizes that. It's about exercising the latent talent that resides in all of us to a collective call and collective engagement. Funding that kind of thinking, that kind of framework, uh, is a better approach than continuing to fund the status quo and hoping, praying, that somehow something's going to change. Funding the World Business Academy is funding the well-being of business and your communities ultimately of your country and the world. Right now we have a once in a millennia opportunity. We get to decide which path we take. We're asking you to join with us and to lead with us and to make this challenge personal. Support this effort with a financial contribution and with your time and together we get to create the future that we want.